if my wife is pregnant and you ask me, what are you getting, elder? And I say, yeah, I'm getting my own image. Automatically, you think he's a boy. I mean, now, for me to know how God is, I must know, for me to know what kind of image that God created me, I must know who God is. And John 4.24 says, God is a spirit. So anybody who worships him must worship him what? in truth and in spirit. That means if God is a spirit, and that his spirit dwells in you, then why can't we do what he wants? He wants us to pray to him. This, our flesh, has a limit. But the spirit goes high. So we are two in one. Our flesh outside and our spirit inside, our inner man. Take this thing we call seesaw, for example. If two people are on a seesaw, one here and one there, equilibrium in the center. When one goes up, the other goes down. So when it's equilibrium, it's your flesh and it's your spirit. So the more you fast, the body becomes, now I'm losing weight by force. <laughs> your flesh goes down. When your flesh goes down, what happens to the other end? Your spirit goes high. So the more your spirit goes high, it can to embrace the Father. Amen. So there's a power in fasting. God. You get closer to your God. Amen. You tell him that, God, my flesh doesn't matter to me. Cast away my flesh. Yes. And take over my spirit. And let my spirit be able to commune with you. In the name of Jesus. So the moment you do that, God says, wow, somebody is getting closer to my, my temple. Amen. Amen. We have power in our hands, but we don't use it. There's power behind prayer, but we don't know. There's power behind fasting, but we let it go. Why? And Satan will say, look at them. They say they love God. They can't even fast. They will laugh at us. Satan knows all these things, yet we Christians, we don't know. So prayer and fasting should not be a burden or a duty, but rather it's supposed to be a celebration of God's goodness and mercy towards you. Because God said, I have everything ready. Just ask me. Ask me and I'll give it to you. But the moment you pray, you are celebrating that God has already have everything in store for you. So what is our problem? What is our problem? The moment you begin to fast, you begin to get momentum. Say momentum. 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 It's a physics term. It propels you along. Like how, a, 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 how do you call it? A, a fleet of aeroplane. When it's about to take off, it got the momentum from the floor. From taxi before it get up. That's how it is. The moment you begin to embark on fasting, you gain momentum in the spirit. And you shoot like rockets. Hallelujah. Amen. Now when they prepare to get the rocket, a maximum amount of uh, energy is created, heat, to propel this thing to the moon. That's, you are more than that. When you go one day fast, you know how fast you can propel? So times five this week. Ah! We have hit the target in the heavens. Amen. Things are beginning to lock. Amen. Next, you can begin to see the manifestation of the power that you are praying for. Amen. 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 In the Old Testament, it appears that fasting with prayer had to do with a sense of need and dependence, an object of helplessness in the face of actual anticipated calamity. This thing happens in the time of Babylonians, when uh, Israel was taken into captivity. They went there and they suffered. But lo and behold, God has already prophesied through his servant Jeremiah that after 70 days, somebody say 70, 70, 70. Ha, I'm going to deliver my people. They will go back home. And do you think it will just come like that without somebody mm. praying? Mm. Hmm. One man called Daniel. The spirit shook him. He went down on his knees. The Bible says Daniel chapter 9 verse 3. He de devoted himself so much into prayer that the Bible described that. He said in Daniel 9 3. So I turned to the Lord and pleaded with him in prayer. Say prayer. 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 He prayed with God in prayer and petition and in fasting. And in sackcloth and in ashes. Say, God, the 70 days that you said has elapsed. For that, remember your covenant, what you spoke through your servant Jeremiah, and come to our aid. God said, Wow, somebody has issued me alliances for me to act on their behalf. Let me go quickly. And without Daniel's prayer, they would have, to, they would have been there by now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the moment you go down on your knees and begin to pray, something takes place. In Ezra chapter 2, verse 2, he made mention of some people's name. But the one that I captured was Nehemiah. He too was the same guy. He was the king's cup bearer. He used to taste the wine even the, the, before the king tasted the wine. He even tasted the food before even the king tasted the food. So his position was very high. Somebody standing by the side of a king. 
He had everything that he needed. But the woman he heard how Jerusalem was in desolation. The Bible said he went into his room. He cried. He fasted. He confessed unto God. He left everything behind. The positions and the titles and the amount of money that you get. He put it aside. The Bible said he fasted. And through his intervention, he was able to build the wall around Jerusalem. What can you do with prayer? It couldn't end there. Look at Mordecai, the uncle of Esther. Esther said, I'm about to go and see the king. By the time it's not yet due, if I go, I might be killed. Everybody fast and pray for me. Mm. The woman God heard, say, God said, wow. Some people have issued now alliances for me to protect my daughter. Mm. Death, I will do it. Amen. And through Mordecai and Esther, the whole Israel nation was saved. That's Amen. the power of prayer. Amen. We have the same thing. Hallelujah. And we don't value it. So when it came to the time of Ezra, Ezra, when you check his genealogy, when you read the books, uh, six, verse, chapter 6 and five, 5 and 6, you trace his route back down to Aaron. He was from the genealogy of Aaron, the priest. My question is, today, can we die and go and let our children take our footsteps? Can we? If you, you mention so many names, and I think this one gave birth to this, this one gives birth to that. If that time they give birth around the age of 30, or let me say 35, times number of people, backwards, that means over years and years back, but the line is still there for them to follow. With that fasting and prayer, we will die and go, our children will be missing. The ideologies and the computer age of this day, this day and their school activities, they will derail their mind, they will forget about God. So it's a high time we embark ourselves on prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's read the Ezra 8, 21 again. Let's take it one by one. Then we go into deep, then we begin to get things to pray about. Uh -huh. Ezra chapter 8, verses 21. Take it one by one. Uh -huh. 8, 21. Uh -huh. Okay. Then I proclaimed a fast there. Mm -hmm. There. Where? Then I proclaim a fast there. You know the place then where? River of okay. Ahava. Good. That river didn't come in for nothing. You could have said, then I proclaim a fast. Full stop. But he specified the place. Ahava means living, to be in existence. Mm. Amen. You could have chosen another place. But Jesus is the only water that when you drink in this life, spiritually you never get test. You will live and live and live. You can live on few days on food, but you can't live on few days on without water. Mm. So the river there is a river of life. You know what this man says? It represents Jesus Christ. Whenever that we fast, uh, we see that, hey, this is our river of life. Jesus is the one who is going to quench your thirst. So if you can't fast, think about this river. It will give you the, 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 the capacity, the momentum to embark on the fasting journey. And by the time you finish, you see that your thirst has been quenched by this river. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Please continue. That we may, we might afflict ourselves. Ha. I say afflict. Afflict. Afflict means you are doing something okay. painful to yourself. Thank God. Wow. Last time I was watching some documentary of uh, this guy, uh, uh, the Saddam Hussein. Mm. How they could they use chains to cut themselves and to do themselves. But I said, what do these people gain from it? And when I was following that documentary, it's like, the more brace and cast you have, the more brave you are. How can you afflict such a thing because of man? So when I come back there, this man say we afflict ourselves. That means maybe dry fasting. You, know. you could be from Monday to Friday, no food, no water. Then you can see that all these reps, you can count them. Not this our fasting, we finish fasting, so our belly is like this. They afflicted themselves. Say afflict. Afflict. So when God see that your flesh is going down, then your spirit is also going what? Going higher. Continue for me. What did he say? To seek of him a right way for us. Hold on. To seek for us a right way. Many a times we do things we don't even consult God. God knows all the ways. There are so many ways to travel from Babylon to uh, Jerusalem that time. That time the miles was about 900 miles. There was no car. No BMW like the one I have here. No. No trams, no trains, no airplanes. Everything go on horseback and on camels. So you can travel and walk for 900 miles. It took about four months for them to reach there. So the Bible said they sought the face of God for him to teach them the right way. Mm. And that journey was full of bandits, robbers, thieves, 
along the way. So they could have been killed easily. Hmm. When I bring this thing to our modern dispensation, we are now journeying from Satan's dominion. We are going into where God says we should come. Hmm. And along this way, Satan is there. Liars are there. Hypocrisy is there. Backbiting is there. Those things are there to cripple us. So if you don't fast and pray, along the way you might fall. Hmm. And when you fall, nobody will be there to pick you up. That's why the guy said, we fasted, we afflicted ourselves, and we prayed that God should direct us the right way. Which way do you commit to God? Which way? Your marital ways, your academics, your finances, whichever way it is, commit it to God in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue for me. And for our little ones, uh -huh. and for all Hold on. our sisters. And our little ones, our children, many a times when we pray, we forget even our children. We don't pray for them. But they should be on our number one priority. Because I'm getting older. Very soon I'll go. But will they take our position? Ezra, genealogy back to uh, this man, Aaron. He held it. He held the baton. But when we die and go, maybe my son Emmanuel will carry over. How about his son? It will be off. So our young ones must be on our priority anytime we pray. The school they are going, the things they teach them, if you look in their books, you will be surprised. Mm. At the age of 9, 10, they teach them about this and that. Sometimes, say, wow, we must remember them in prayer. And they say, all our substance, including our money, our income, our possessions, mm. anything that you have, submit it to God. Apply the blood of Jesus upon it, and Satan will by no means touch it. But we pray on the surface and then we leave things idle. There is power in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue for me. What again did he say? For I was ashamed to require. Hold on. Kings. He was ashamed. Somebody that the government or the king has issued a decree, go. And he knew that there were robbers there, mm -hmm. that they can kill them. Mm -hmm. But he said he was ashamed to go and ask for the king for help. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he has made a testimony mm -hmm. concerning his God. Mm -hmm. Hey, you don't know my God? That my God is the one who parted the rest into two for Israel to walk through. That my God is the one when we came to the river Jordan, it was a flowing bus. We stepped into it and it was open. That my God is the one who answered Elijah by fire. My that God. my God is the one who when somebody is dead, he can raise him up. Amen. This Israel man began to testify about the goodness of God to the king. So when he had gone to the king, he said, King, we are about to go, no man. But that world is full of robbers. Oh. Can't you give us some treasures? The king said, oh, but you just told me your God is the one who can make. The king will laugh at him. So that's why he said we were ashamed even mm. to ask for escort. Mm. But I tell him, if you go down in prayer, you'll be ashamed to go and borrow money. Mm. Last time I was making a testimony here. How I, all of a sudden I was financially crippled. Ha! We just moved to a new home, a new baby, Christmas. Wow! All the coffers draining. <laughs> the first one in January. Hey, 10 days has passed. <laughs> 11 days. I get email. <laughs> say, God, I always stand here and say, I'm the millionaire in the house. How can I go and borrow money? Millionaires don't borrow. God, this one is not part of me. Ah, Father, do something now. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he make a way. A There's some wiring in the yeah, accounts. And I fulfill my duty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I will be ashamed to come and say, the can tell you. Please, can you borrow me 500 and the coordinator will add 300 for me? Why? Mironia, you can't be my friend. I'll be ashamed because I know a God that I trust. As I knew the God that he depend on. That's why he said I was ashamed even to ask for the king for this and that. Continue for me. We are about to finish. Because we have spoken unto the king, saying, mm -hmm. The hand of our God is upon all Aha. them for good that seek him. Good. The, the, hold on. The hand of the Lord is upon them that seek Him. Hallelujah. Whenever we say the hand, ha, say hand. 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 Hey, mm. there are two hands. Say two hands. Two hands. But you have two hands. Mm. God has a hand mm. that when He put on you, mm. that hand symbolizes power mm. and strength, mm. dignity, value. That's when God put on you, it means he has put something on you. Nobody can even dare to remove God's hand from you. You will go and come and they will be afraid of you. Hallelujah. Amen. When I read through this thing, seven places I came across, the hand of God was upon him, mm. upon us, 
and upon them. Amen. Amen. So the more you get closer to God, the more his hand will be upon you. Amen. Amen. The hand there, you can read many times, any time you see hand, hand, hand of the enemies, hand of God, but hand is hand. But that hand of God, in the other language, they call it Yod. Yod means power, mm. strength. I mean, everything that we need is in that hand. And the other hand of the enemy, we call it calf. Mm. Calf is a human hand. You can cut it. By God's hand, can you see God's hand to cut? No. So you see, because the hand of God was what? Upon us. It's my prayer Amen. that before we finish this five-day period journey, hand of God. God's hand will be upon you. Amen. He will Amen. elevate you from the place where people don't respect you Amen. and Amen. set you upon a higher rock. Amen. You're going to put a new song in, my, in your mind. Yes, and the moment you begin to proclaim his goodness, oh, Jesus. Ah, ah, things will begin to flow. Yes, Lord. What is your problem? Why can't you pray? Why can't you fast? There's power in fasting and prayer. Please finish it for what did he say next? But his power and his wrath is <laughs> against them that forsake him. Thank you. Me, when I pray, eh, I don't waste my time to say, God, any my enemy. No, no, I don't have time for that. For this. For this. Forget about that. Mm. I go to the first sentence. He said, when you seek him, mm. his hand will be upon you. Mm. When the hand of God come, mm. difficulty will be easy for you. Man. You don't have to struggle over things. Mm. When people are fighting for you about this one, mm. you will stand there and begin to laugh. Why? Because the hand of God is upon you. And the more you seek him, he is dealing with your enemies. Mm. So why are you wasting your time to go and fight the enemy? Forget about that. Mm. Tackle the God himself. Seek his face. That's why David said, your face, oh Lord, will I ever seek. Mm. When David was seeking for God's face, God was dealing with his enemies. Amen. So in prayer, we seek God's face. Yesterday, my mom said, bless us so much. When I was home, I was watching the clip. I said, wow, mm. this one is deep. Deep. And the more I seek him, the more things begin to go well. And the